welcome to our All Road Lead to the Moon tour. This is going to be a series of videos we're hoping to do. All Roads Lead to the Moon is the name we've given our trip, which will take us from Argentina to Alaska and then back into America and around America. So the plan is to fly the bikes to Buenos Aires in Argentina. We're going to head south to Tierra del Huego, which is the island of the south of Argentina and the city of Ushaya, which is the southernmost, most inhabited place in the world. And then head up the west of the continent, going between Chile and Argentina, all the way up the Andes, into Peru, Ecuador, and then Colombia. So from Colombia, we're going to either have to fly or ship the bikes to Panama. There's a 60 mile gap here, the Darien Gap, which is impassable. We then go through Central America, through Panama, Honduras, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, and Mexico. We go through Mexico, probably up part of the Baja Peninsula, into the United States. From the United States, we'll do a bit of Route 66 and head up through Utah and then Wyoming for a Norton meeting in July. Then head through Canada up to Anchorage in Alaska. From Anchorage in Alaska, we head back down through Alaska, Canada, back into the States to St. Louis, heading over to Chicago on the old Route 66, Niagara, across to Boston, into New York, and then after New York, hopefully, we'll head down into Florida to finish off our year-long trip. Yeah, we've got the neoprene fork gaiters on, just to protect the forks a bit for stones and various bits and pieces. We've got the uh, radiator guard, aluminium radiator guard. They normally just come with a plastic one and it doesn't really guard very much. Hopefully that'll stop the stones and everything damaging the radiator. We've got hand guards just to keep the obviously the stones and everything else off your hands and to keep your hands a bit uh, warmer as well. Heated grips on the bikes which were on it when we got them. We've also got the centre stand which will be useful for maintenance on the road. We also have to modify the seats. What we found on the last journey was that the seats really weren't comfortable. After a hundred miles it really started to nip your arse. So mine just was done first and it's got a good bit of extra padding on it. We found that was maybe a bit high for Fiona. So Fiona's has also got extra padding but not quite as much. And uh, certainly this test run today has proved that it's far more comfortable than the standard. The standard seat really isn't up to huge distances. Also, <coughs> the other problem with these bikes is the battery actually sits here under what would be the petrol tank in a normal bike and it gets really hot with all the heat coming up for the engine and it tends to evaporate the battery acid over a long period of time. So we've filled them with maintenance free sealed batteries. We'll put them on in the hope that uh, we don't have battery problems and they're a bit better capacity as well. We've also got a lead for our uh, heated gloves, heated jacket, whatever you're putting on at the time. On mines we've also got a GPS bracket which uh, I'll carry a Garmin GPS 62 GPS. It's uh, been using it for a while now and found it really good. Touratech GPS bracket. It's not the best thought out thing in the world because if you come round here, if you look at it from the rider's point of view, it means you can hardly see your speedo, <laughs> which is really no great. But, however, that's the way it is. I'll just have to keep the speed below 50 miles an hour because you can see up to 50. Uh, Another thing I put on is this uh, wee mud flap. It's been cut down a bit from the original. These are about a quid each. Um, but without it, there's a hellish amount of water seems to come off the uh, back wheel. Uh, and this, it's unbelievable just how much it stops. And it's also an excuse to put another Scotland sticker on just to let everybody know where we're from. These are the panniers. Quite easy to go on. Basically they fit in here. Just to open them up. <coughs> and then there's a screw in the inside. 
front and back, this one and that one, and then that's some secure. Locks front and back. And on the back we've fitted these bottle racks, and they can take these two litre containers, useful for petrol, uh, water, wine, whatever, but you just kind of mix it. Um, and I've ordered up some three litre containers which these can take as well. So it's just going to be useful for uh, extra water and, and fuel. So we've also fitted on the back shock absorber, these neoprene covers as well, just to try and keep the muck out of the back shock because it sits in front of the back wheel. As you can see, there's a definite propensity for uh, muck and stones to get thrown up onto the back shock. So we'll take some spares with us. We've got Scott Euler spares, spare clutch and brake lever, air filters, oil filters, spare brake pads, front and back for both bikes, a few nuts and bolts, various washers, super glue. We're taking spare sprockets for both bikes as well. So electrical stuff, we've got a spare regular, second hand regular rectifier. Obviously some sticky tape, some fuses. The GS911, this gadget here, <coughs> it fits into your wiring loom and you can interrogate the uh, ECU with This speaks to either laptop or indeed your mobile phone can sync into it as well via Bluetooth and you can reset fault codes and check fault codes. So I think this is going to be worth its weight in gold if we do have any problems, which hopefully we don't. Hopefully we never see this on the trip. Hopefully it stays in its box. We've got a standard toolkit on the bikes as well and I've got a few extra tools here. Uh, just wondering about the weight. Spare sprockets, front and back. And that's Fiona, really interested in the bike preparation. <laughs> 